such a good team but there's no way neo wins this like they have 13 finishes already their control okay nice knock that's great oh oh no fucking way there's no way there's no way that grenade is i think he threw it too if that grenade hits Yo guys, welcome to another analysis video. This time I am doing it on BGIS and specifically Team Godlike. So, if you like Team Godlike, if you like the fact I'm doing analysis videos of our Indian teams, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and show this video to some of your friends if you wanna do, you know, comp and you feel like you could definitely learn something from this. But anyways, Team Godlike, I'm gonna do an analysis on a quarterfinals match on Miramar. And specifically in this game, I saw Godlike use extremely good skill at, as far as pressuring and spacing goes. So I'm gonna do a huge focus on that for this game. They didn't win the game, but they got a lot of kills. And before anyone asks, yes, I think Jonathan is currently the best player in India. And I think Godlike is a top three team. Definitely for sure top three team. I almost want to say top one, but you know, performances go up and down every here and there. So let's just see how they do in the finals. And so without further ado, let's head into the analysis video. Okay, so for starters at the start of the match, you see uh, Godlike do a split drop. Not much to say on that. I'm always a fan of split drops because you get more loot, you get more spacing. And just a quick example, if the circle were to go somewhere over here, or let me draw a better one, somewhere down here in the southeast or southwest, you already have a player like Z-God who can do some early scouting and find a spot for the team. If the circle goes the other way, you know, you could got someone this who has priority over, you know, rotating that way. So that's one benefit of the split drop. Not much else to say there. So let's head on to the second point I wanna make for the early stage of the game. All right, so heading into the second circle, we saw earlier, uh, Team Godlike did a split drop around here, something like this. There was a team that landed in San Martin, so that team obviously had more priority over center, so they went ahead and went more central. So what Godlike does here on their first rotation is they simply go as center as possible without needing to run into a team or fight a team because circle's still early, there's no real reason to fight for a position center and of course getting third partied if you're playing such a central position as a thing. So they take a center off edge position. This is what I like to call it. But this position in particular is a very strong one regardless of where it is in the zone. And you'll see later on how they utilize this to jump through their next rotation on the hard shift. So this is the third circle that pops up. You see here, Godlike right now is on the edge of the third circle. Now, I think for the fourth circle, that's when you really want to get a more center rotation if possible. On the third circle, you want to wait for that fourth circle hard shift. Otherwise, if you commit someone more center, it'd be just too early and the circle could just hard shift somewhere else and you're gonna have enemies at your back, you're gonna have enemies at your front. So I really love how Team Godlike, they don't rotate, they just stay here and they make sure to space teams away, which creates a spacing for them to rotate on that fourth circle hard shift, which you will see in a little bit. So as you can see here, Godlike, they're on the edge, they're not rotating at all, and just like I said, they're creating spacing. They're making sure they're pushing teams away. And you can see, we're 13 minutes into the game, a bit further in, and they're spacing this team away. Also, there were previous teams on behind Godlike, but from this strong position, even though it's on the edge, what happens is teams don't want to fight for this position because it's on the edge of zone. There's no reason to take a 4v4 fight on the edge of zone. And Godlike realizes this. This makes it very easy to just put some shots and teams will just leave them alone and go elsewhere. And you'll see very soon in this next clip what kind of spacing this creates for them. Okay, so here is the fourth circle hard shift. 
Now, the fourth circle hard shift. This is the most crucial part of the game. I think circles one through three, there's many numerous ways to play it. You could do an edge strategy. You could be more center focused. But circles one through three, you just have to make sure you set yourself up in a strong position for that fourth circle hard shift. And if you have a really good strategy, you'll know kind of what to do on that fourth circle hard shift based on your position, no matter where it goes. And here, Godlike does a really smart rotation and it really comes down to map knowledge and spacing. So let's go, go ahead and take a look at how they plan out and do this rotation. The first thing to note is what I mentioned earlier. They're on the edge of zone, but in a strong position. So you see they created a huge pocket of control for them. There's no teams around this whole area because they have sight lines and they've pushed all the teams coming from behind them away off to the sides. So this allows for them to rotate more easily on that fourth circle hard shift and they have more of an idea of where they want to go. Now, the next part that Godlike does really well, we'll see is their map knowledge. They actually know a spot inside this zone that's a little bit more towards the center and a little bit off center, but they make a really nice rotation once they figure out how to get there. Okay, so Godlike utilizes a very smart rotation and it's more of a map knowledge rotation. You see Godlike has rotated here on that fourth circle hard shift. Now, this is more of an advanced rotation. I think Godlike's strength is not necessarily in their rotations, but in their ability to fight and create spacing, which we're about to see right after this point. But I really love this rotation. This is one that really kind of stood out to me. There are other teams that know of this spot. This spot isn't super rare, but definitely more on the unknown side. And I would like to call this a pocket rotation. So I talk about pocket rotations in another video. I'm probably gonna have a link up here or something pop up up here. But you'll see um, it's a previous video that I did over a Chinese team called TC. And they did a really nice pocket rotation there. So if you want to learn more about pocket rotations, go ahead and click that. But anyways, let's get back to this game. Okay, so like I said, this was a very good rotation by God. Like I would almost akin it to like a pocket rotation. You'll see how they kind of managed to do it. So from here, with the spacing they created, they found a way to rotate through here. They could see that this is all clear. And even if there were enemies here, they could take shots at them and probably get knocks. And knowing godlike, they would probably take the fight and, you know, pick up the kill points. But for them, there's no teams here because they created that spacing. And with this rotation, this one, they just cut in through here and they're playing this spot. Now, if you're not too familiar what this spot is, you'll see them utilize this spot very well in the upcoming clips. Now, this is the part where Godlike really starts shining through with their spacing and pressure. Earlier on, it was more of a basic spacing and pressure, but here you'll see them actively shoot at enemy players, push out of a safe, comfortable spot, and constantly go back and forth back and forth creating that pressure creating that spacing of this pocket area in front of them and meanwhile they're doing all of this they're also picking up the kills take a note here they're not pushing with all their players they're pushing in two-man pairs they're doing a constant 2-2 split they're making sure that the territory that they already had that pocket area that they have they're making sure it doesn't get taken and through the work of teamwork and really good recognition of when to take advantage and of course individual skill, you're going to see them do this back and forth a lot. Okay, so we are going to refer back to this map quite a few times because I want to show you guys exactly how active they were in this area that they were safe and they were actively putting out pressure. So of course they made their first rotation down into this area. And from here, you can see in the clips, it's a very safe spot. It's a nice rotation. It's, a, it's more map knowledge rotation right there. But already we saw they did a quick 2-2, two, two, right? They have two players separated here, and we saw Jonathan and Neo push out. They picked up a knock on a rotating team, and then they pushed aggressively 2v1 on the other player, and they picked up a total of two finishes right there. They're currently now at three finishes with this first spacing pressure, and immediately right after they finish that, the two players here, 
They got in their buggy and went back to their pocket where it's safe because they're waiting for more rotations to happen. They don't want to get caught by another team coming in here and stopping from behind them. So they're just taking quick advantage of these opportunities and then resetting back to the 2-2 like standard. Okay, something I forgot to mention in the previous clip is that the circle just shifted as well when they picked up those two uh, finishes. So that's another reason why they went back. And by the time we see them on the screen again, take note of their positioning once again. They readjusted, but here, that 2-2, two -two, that was like they had two players here earlier. They've now shifted it away to another front. They have two players Neo right here holding the back line along with Z God, I believe. They're holding their flanks. With this circle shift, there's a lot of teams coming in from the south. So they're holding down that side. But given this position and the way the terrain is, Godlock is very comfortable holding back an entire team with two players because they recognize this is a strong position. Once again, the map knowledge coming into play. And you'll see. They already picked up one. Now they are at four finishes. And of course, the players out of Godlike, extremely good individual skill. Their aim is insane. And now take a look at the other side of things, right? The other 2-2 two -two split. The spacing and pressure is unreal right now. They have the safe spot in the zone, but they want more. And that's honestly through very good recognition of the terrain very good individual skill if you have a player of lower skill level that tries to do something like this they could easily get knocked you hear you see here jonathan is now going to be paired up with the igl clutch god and you'll see it's clutch god the igl who uses jonathan who recognizes these opportunities to put out pressure to space out instead of sitting in one spot and staying safe they're picking up kills and creating spacing for themselves You'll continuously here. See, there's Clutch God right there, the IGL. And now, this is not without risk. There's a good chance Jonathan could have gotten knocked here. And if Jonathan does get knocked, at least with the way they're spaced out, Clutch God could stay here, put the pressure out. And you see these two players here? They're putting really good pressure out on their own end already, utilizing the terrain. Where even if Jonathan gets knocked, a good way to recover this when you have your players spaced out and controlling even ground or controlling a good amount of territory is Clutch God stays here to put out pressure to make sure Soul doesn't just try and keep shooting Jonathan to get Thurston for free. And then you can expect one player from this position after they've secured down the flank or put out, put out enough pressure on the flank for them to come over to revive Jonathan. So this player will come in from this side. The entire time, you have a formation, right? You have Clutch God here. You have one player in the flank holding back their side of the zone. And then that player rotates in to secure Jonathan. Whereas, you know, sometimes a less experienced team would have this player move back here, giving Soul free reign to pressure both players and probably get both knocks. But anyways, this is just a second phase of their spacing and pressuring. We already went through one phase. Okay, once again, we're back on the map feed. They have two players here, and Jonathan and Clutch God were here, but you saw them space out this way and take a fight with the soul players and picking, and they try to pick up some knocks, pick up some eliminations. And then after that, you saw in the clip, as soon as Jonathan felt too much pressure, Clutch God and Jonathan both come back from this position, and then they reset. So this is the second time They've applied pressure and spacing by pushing out of a completely safe spot and recognizing an opportunity to pick up more kills and potentially eliminate some teams and clear up space for their side of the circle. So here, like I said, Jonathan and Godlike feel like they're a little under a little bit more pressure than usual. So they immediately rotate back to that safe area, that pocket. Meanwhile, you could see in the kill feed, we just missed it a second ago. On the other side of thing, Neo is also putting in work and getting a lot of knocks and kills on the opposite end. Remember, they keep two players in the flank to protect this area, which is the most crucial part of the zone. And if they need help, they can call back Jonathan and uh, <clears throat> Clutch God. So, notice their rotation back. They go back to that pocket. 
They make sure they secure that area down some more. It's still a 2-2 split. And once they secure their flanks, you're going to notice them push out once again. If we just skip forward a little bit. Pay attention to this map feed right here on the top right. So this is the third time now they're spacing out a little bit. Keep a close eye up here. They're moving back and forth, getting some info. And you see Jonathan. That's Jonathan right there. Jonathan gets in the car right here. Right, that's Jonathan in the car. Clutch God, the IGL, right? He recognizes another opportunity to send Jonathan out in a rather safe spot. Once again, the IGL is the one that usually is in charge of recognizing these opportunities and calling it out and getting the team to do certain things. Now, Jonathan, in my opinion, is probably the best player in India right now. So he's utilizing Jonathan really well. Like He's sending Jonathan out in these more tough positions, but he trusts Jonathan's skill to be able to do it correctly and be safe. So you can see right here, Jonathan, once again, they push out, get some pressure. Z got a Neo, still in the back holding down the flank to make sure no teams take over their position in the circle. And here you can see Jonathan has moved up very close to this player right here with Clutch God, of course, keeping watch, keeping pressure, making sure he stays safe. And you'll see it in the kill feed. They don't catch it here during the game. But right there, Jonathan gets a finish. He gets a finish and wipes out another team. That's another kill point for a team godlike. And the thing is, once Jonathan gets there, he stays there for a little bit. He tries to see if there's more opportunity to get more kills. And he's, you know, he first makes has to make sure that his spot is safe for him to stay there. And that's up to individual player skill and awareness. Clutch God, you know, can't tell him exactly if he's safe or not because he's in that position. He has a better idea. And then if we fast forward some more, you see now in this situation, there's another team coming in on the side. They already eliminated Team BE that was down here, right? Neo and Z-God doing a really good job controlling the flank. And now there's another team not exactly pushing them, but they see an opportunity to wipe out another team that's on their side. And every time Team Godlike is about to make a push on a team where something might happen, where something might go wrong, you'll notice they call back their players. So you see Z-God Z and Neo moving more aggressively up here now, trying to take advantage of this spot. And Jonathan, he was out there by himself. He could have stayed there maybe, picked up some more kills. But because Z-God and Neo are making a more of aggressive play, Clutch God calls for Jonathan to come back to group up a little bit. They're still using a 2-2, but they're just getting closer together once again in case something goes wrong. So that's excellent control of the team, of the spacing, and taking advantage of opportunities. Okay, so this has got like using spacing and pressuring the fourth time around, all within a matter of minutes. You see here, Neo and Z-God taking advantage of this team down here. Team Outliers, O-U-T-L. And at the same time, though, as they're taking care of this side, they have the advantage. So they're comfortable just being two players doing that, you know, doing that push. And if you take a look at the kill feed, Neo getting some kills right there. And Clutch God just got a knock. Remember, Clutch God is paired with Jonathan. Neo is paired with Z God. So they're doing a 2 2 split still, and they're still putting out pressure and spacing on two different sides. Take a look at this right now. Look at how big they're spaced out this team is just you know their individual skill level is at another level and take a look at this z god does get knocked here in this situation but he has a second teammate with him to get that revive and they've worked that side of the zone to the point where even if he's knocked one player could just get the revive without needing another player to keep cover because they got the advantage already they worked that space so well and at the same time jonathan and Clutch God taking another push on another front and trying to clear out this side of the circle for them against Team RE. And this is actually pretty huge because keep in mind this player's name, Jadu, okay? Well, keep the clip rolling. They almost 
get the finish on Jadu. And if they did, there's a good chance that this game could have ended a lot differently. But you'll see later on what happens with Jadu. Look at this. Jadu, literally 1 HP. If Godlike was just a little bit luckier, like maybe that grenade was like a, a centimeter closer to him, Jadu would be eliminated and Jadu wouldn't be a problem for them later in the game. And it actually has a big impact. But the fact that Godlike is doing this means in future games, maybe that grenade does eliminate Jadu in the future, and then the mistake that will happen later on will not happen in future games. So this is spacing and pressuring number five right now. This was number four, where they do their own two-man push, and this is spacing and pressuring number five, where Jonathan and Clutch God do their push on this side. Okay, here we're going to cover their spacing and pressuring 4 and 5. So last, Jonathan pushed out, wiped a player out with his grenade, and then um, <clears throat> Clutch God calls him back because they see a vulnerability in their flank. And at the same time, Z God and Neo wiped out a team down to their south, this green arrow, but they see another opportunity to put out more pressure and t potentially take out another team. So what happens here is Jonathan falls back, and pushes the team that is over here, hiding, uh, I believe it was Team RE. And then very quickly, Clutch God joins them. So they use a two-man front to push that side. And so let's just take this play, move out Jonathan here. And so now it's a 2-2 two -two push over on this side with Jonathan and Clutch God. And then at the same time, Neo and Z God, they see an opportunity to take out a team on this side and they push over on that that way. So it goes back to another 2 2 split, but they're putting pressure on two different sides now at the same time and they're not losing a single player. I think Z God got knocked, but he is able to get revived very safely because of the control that they had. So many teams with a spot that Godlike was in, they would stay in that dip, stay safe. They'd peek out their heads a little bit, maybe take some shots, pick up a few kills. But Godlike played this position a lot differently. I actually had to watch this game back twice because I noticed on the minimap, they were moving back and forth a lot. And that was really uncommon to see whenever a team gets a nice spot in the zone. So they did up to five different five different spacing and pressuring maneuvers when they didn't have to do any of that. It picked up a lot of kills. And of course, the rest of the game, now that we're coming into the late game, you know, there's not as much you want to do because the map is getting so small and you, all you really need to do is stay closer together as a team. They do make some mistakes from here on out. I believe Jonathan gets knocked, you know, unnecessarily and he also gets finished which at my, in my opinion, at the highest skill level is always some sort of mistake that has happened if a player gets knocked and finished. But I mean, you could take a look at the graphs that I showed a second ago, just like the different drawings, all their different spacing and maneuvering capabilities. It makes this godlike team look like a very strong team and something that I don't see too much, even from top level teams and other regions. Okay, so for the rest of this video, there's not too much more high-level play that I need to analyze. Of course, like I mentioned, towards the late game, Jonathan or maybe Clutch God miscommunication, whatever it might be. They lose uh, Jonathan. Jonathan gets knocked and thirsted. Z God right there gets knocked by Jadu. The player that I was talking about that if they finished earlier, this player would not have caused this issue. And Godlike would be three up instead of two up. And you'll see here what happens afterwards. Canary pushes in. He gets taken out. Jadu in a 1v2 situation gets a really good grenade right here. And that's going to force them to either res Z God or let Z God die and take the 2v1 because Jadu's going to be pushing. So I think this was a really smart call by Godlike actually to take that 2v1. And make sure they don't all die and just let Z God die. So, at this point though, one thing I want to point out. I'm not doing any more analysis, but look at how empty their side of the circle is. Right? If we fast forward this just a little bit more. They push another side, take out a player here. 
and then take a look at the mini map. Godlike side of the circle, right, is so empty. Their side of the circle, everyone's already dead because they've been using that spacing and pressuring, weakening teams, hurting teams, picking up kills. Neo, we didn't talk about Neo too much because off screen, Neo picked up a total of eight finishes, which is crazy. So, like, I focus a lot on Clutch God and Jonathan using their spacing, moving back and forth. But honestly, it's just as important that Neo and Z God, we didn't get to see what they were doing exactly, but they held it down in the flank. They, between them two, picked up almost, you know, two teams worth of kills right there. Eight finishes, that's two teams. So... Neo and Z God also doing extremely well. Jonathan and Clutch God creating that spacing and pressuring, pretty much emptying out their side of the circle here near the bottom half. And the last thing to note before we watch the end, which has a pretty big surprise ending, if you ask me. Well, it's not too big of a surprise. Is take a look at the minute timer, right? 24 minutes into the game, their spacing and pressuring started at the 18 minute mark. This team got here at this position at the 18 minute mark and over the course of around six minutes, they did all the things that I showed earlier. All the different spacing and pressuring, moving back and forth. They didn't sit in that dip. That dip, they could have sat in the whole entire game up to this point and not really didn't do anything but they didn't do that they constantly moved back and forth they were getting kills they were getting that pressure and so in that last six minutes godlike put out a lot of just firepower and at the end of the day this is really good practice for godlike as well that's the other thing i want to mention this is this was the quarterfinals and in the semifinals people are saying they're not playing 100 percent serious which is good they're practicing they're playing aggressive to try and see if they could think as fast as you know as they can can they make all these maneuvers back and forth super fast it's good practice to play aggressive like this and to train their brains to think faster and when they make mistakes doing this fast maneuvering back and forth they'll learn how to fix that and just make it even more perfect so there's no way neo wins this like they have 13 finishes already. Their control. Okay, nice knock. That's great. Oh, oh, no fucking way. There's no way. There's no way. That grenade. I think he threw it too. If that grenade hits. Oh, the. To your left, to your left. Oh, dude. Alright. Godlike didn't win that match, but, dude, Godlike. God like dominated that match, dude. The way they played, dang. Honestly, God like it's definitely a top three team for me. So that's the video. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with you know your fellow friends that might be wanting to do competitive, or share it to your you know God like fans. I'm definitely a fan of God like, and hey, maybe you could get this over to Good Talk. Maybe spam it to Jonathan. I heard they're looking for an analyst. I think I did an okay job. I'm not the best at making videos, but hey, it is what it is. I love you guys for supporting me. You guys are all part of the Zoo Nation. Thanks for sticking through with me to this new year. And we got a long year ahead of us. You guys got a long year ahead of you. So everyone just stay grinding out there. Stay happy. Stay positive. Zoo Nation out. I'll see you guys in the next stream or video. Thank you.